Welcome back guys, we are continuing this Choosing the Right Gun for the Decade series and we are on to the 20s next. In the previous video we did the 30s and the 40s. I probably should have done them in reverse chronological order, but we didn't. We went 30s first and then 40s. <laughs> so now we are on to the 20s. So first thing to do is find out what the enemy torpedo max range is going to be. So, enemy torpedo max range is 9.5 kilometers. So, we need to be above 10 kilometers to make sure we are safe. So, I've quickly gone into the battle to find out what the best range for the first gun will be. So, the first gun, we're going to start off with the largest caliber, and we are at 8% barrel length. We're going to continue with the same system, capped ballistic 2, super heavy. We've got tube powder 1 and picric acid because they've got the reduced muzzle velocity. And I think we are good to go. So I think I've already set the, yeah, I've set the range up already. We need to be above 15 kilometers. So let's see how the 16.9 inch gets on. So we've only actually got 3 to 4% accuracy at this range. Let's have a look see what our range found. So we are above 5%, which is good. But we've not got a considerable amount of accuracy. But this is the range that we need to be at to be... We're actually a bit too close at the moment. This is the range that we need to be at to be able to hit the deck 99% of the time. So obviously you could risk going a bit closer to get your accu accuracy up. But it does mean that you're going to hit the belt. And then obviously that means that you're going to get blocks and ricochets. So, I've got a feeling that 1920s, you might be better off not going for the deck. This might be the era, the last era that you concentrate on belt destroying. But I want to see how much damage we do to the deck and how many shots it takes to actually destroy the enemy ship. So I'm reducing the range a bit, so we are going to, in fact, we're probably not going to have enough pen. Let's have a look. We've only got 13.9 inches of pen, so we need 18 inches to go through the main deck. So we do need to be at 15 kilometers to be able to pen the main deck. So basically, we just haven't got the accuracy for this particular era to go for deck shots. Now what we can do, let's rebuild the ship. 
Now, if we pump up the length and then reduce this capped ballistic, that might be the better choice. Oh no, it's the other way round, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, it'd be the other way round. So I'd need to reduce the length. Which then means that we can get pen at a closer range, but we're still going to hit the, the belt quite often. So let's have a look at what, what it looks like at uh, zero, zero percent length. Really, I need to start closer to the enemy so I identify them quicker. So let's start close to the enemy. So what we're looking for is... An ideal range to be able to pen the enemy up and still be able to hit the deck um, more often than, well, as high a percent chance to hit the deck as possible, but also have a decent accuracy. I can't see deck shots being viable. I just can't see it. So let's get him identified. Right, so we've got a 20% chance to hit the belt. We've uh, we've got the right amount of pen. So at 10 kilometers, let's see how we get on. Let's see what the accuracy. Wait for the gun recoil to go down. We're actually getting lower than 10. Right, so we need to be above 18, preferably around 20 inches of pen. We're at 17 at the moment. Yeah, the accuracy is just not good enough. So I think, because the thing, the reason that 1920 is going to struggle hitting the deck is because we haven't got radar. It's the radar that increases your range found stat considerably. So without radar, I don't think deck shots are worth going for. Because you've just got such a, a poor chance to actually hit at this range. They just take far too long. 
We could attempt to try some of the other calibers, but the other calibers are going to have a higher chance to hit the side, the belt. So we're, we're going to have the same issue, basically. So let's get a bit closer. Let's get to 10 kilometers. So let's have a look, see what the accuracy is at 10 kilometers. I think what I had it at before at plus eight barrel length and fighting at 15 kilometers is still the best option. It just felt like the accuracy was far too low. So we're at 6%. We've got one more kilometer to go. So we're at 8%. So we can get around about 8% at 10 kilometers. It's still not good enough. So let's have one more look to see what it was at when we were on plus 8 barrel length and 15 kilometers. But yeah, I'm pretty certain that. There's no point in going for deck shots until you unlock radar. Yeah, the accuracy's just it's just shoddy. It's really, really bad. See, we're not even at 15 kilometers at the moment, and we're already 5%, man. It's obviously changing because the enemy is doing some maneuvers. Three percent. It'd take an eternity to sink him. So I think what I'll do is I'll advance the time to when we first unlock radar. I think it's around about twenty five, nineteen twenty five. Yeah, we're looking at 5% maximum. Yeah, it's pointless. Th this is pointless. So, let's find out... Whoops. Let's find out when we unlock radar. Still no radar... So we're basically at 1930 at this point, so yeah, it's pretty pointless. It's pretty pointless running this test, I reckon. Right, let's try 1920 and use a mortar style. So it means that we're going to hit the deck, sorry, the belt, far too often, even with a mortar style gun. So let's see what we're looking at with a minus 20. Wrong button. OK, 
Okay, so we've got everything that reduces it apart from this. So let's reduce that down to semi. Minus 20. Let's just see. This is the shortest muzzle velocity that we can achieve. Didn't actually want to start shooting yet. Just want to identify the ship. Okay, so we've got a 19% chance to hit this, the belt at the moment. So let's wait to see. In fact, let's have a look. We haven't actually got a high enough pen. So we're going to have to change this. So that would be seven and a half. Now we need to make sure we're outside of torpedo range. So standard. Right, so it might be standard plus. So that'll give us torpedo range. So we're going to need a little bit of leeway. It's not a huge amount. It's only one kilometer, one and a half kilometer leeway. And that'll give us far too much AP. So maybe... See what that gives us. So that's pretty much spot on for AP. But we've only got a one kilometer leeway. Which is incredibly difficult to actually sit in. So let's go for standard. Just increase this slightly. So that's far too much AP. So we're going to have to increase it a bit more. So that's 25 at 10. 23 at 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's just simply not going to work. 20 at 10 kilometers with a 15 kilometer range. Let's give it a go. But I can't see this working at all. Okay, so what are we looking at? 10 kilometer range. We're looking at 20, 18%, 17%. We haven't got enough pen quite yet though, so we're going to have to extend the range out to 
maybe 11 kilometers. I think 11 kilometers will be spot on in terms of pen. But then, what is it going to be in terms of hitting the belt? Maybe about 14% chance to hit the belt. So let's start getting some shots off. And then we'll have an idea of what our accuracy is going to be like at this range. Yeah, that's just, that accuracy is goddamn awful. We had a better accuracy with the 8% at a longer range. Yeah, this gun, this gun won't work. This gun simply won't work. We might have better, better success with a different gun. So, let's try... Let's have a look. See what we're see what we're looking at here. So that's Mark One. That's Mark One. So let's try this Mark Three 14 inch. It. There's no point in trying this Mark One 15 inch because we're going to have exactly the same problem. So this Mark One 14 inch. Mark Three. Sorry. What are we looking at? So let's try back up at capped again. And then we're going to need so that's seventeen and a half kilometers to get the right AP. Let's test this out then. I think I need to shorten the barrel a little bit to be honest with it. Let's give it a go, though. Okay, so we're at the correct pen range, and we've got a 9% chance to hit the belt. So it's not ideal, but let's just see what the accuracy is like at this range. Ah. Right. We need radar. Without radar, this test is going nowhere. Well, we actually hit the, the belt, or oh, the deck, sorry. We actually hit the deck. So we got a 12% chance to hit, and a almost 20% chance to hit the belt. Yeah, going for the deck before you get radar is not a viable option, sadly. But we needed to find out. We needed to find out. So let's try... Reducing the barrel, it'll mean that we're still going to hit the belt. Right, let's just try, let's see what the range is like with minus 10. So we've still got a 15 kilometer range, so minus 10 is going to give us... Hmm. Let's just reduce this by one. And then let's just have a look, see what we're looking at. Until we actually get in there. It's going to be hard to know. Okay, so we're at the range where we can pan the deck. 
almost anyway. And we're outside of torpedo range, so that's two criteria met. But we've got a 20% chance to hit the belt, so that is not ideal. But let's have a look and just see what the accuracy is like. Once we get our range found sorted. Okay, that's sorted. So we're going to need to be a bit further away. So we're already getting blocked shots because we're hitting the belt. Yeah, the accuracy is shocking. Looking at around about 5% maximum. With a 18% chance to hit the belt. Yep. I didn't think that it'd be possible. But I had to just run the test just to make sure. Yeah, this is pointless. Okay, so until you get radar unlocked, just go for belt shots. So I suppose what I could do is try and figure out the best belt pen. But belt pen is pretty broken at the moment. So you're looking at 28 inches and 14 inches. So, for belt pen, you need a completely different design. You need light shells. I don't know what we're going to need this at, but it's probably around standard. We're looking for the best shell muzzle velocity, so cordite is the best option out of them. Okay, so large calibers are not going to be useful for belt pen. You want the highest mark gun. So it's either going to be a Mark 4 9 inch gun or the Mark 3 14 inch gun. So let's see how this 14 inch gun goes. So we need 30 inches of pen. And we want to get outside of torpedo range. So that's about spot on there. But that does not factor in the angle of the shot. So we might need slightly higher than standard. Oh, then again, I haven't put this back up. So this needs to be at maximum, so we're probably going to need to reduce the pen. So we've got 51 to 41 between 10 and 15. So 51 to 41 inches of pen between 10 and 15 kilometers. So let's have a look now. 35 to 29 inches of pen. 
and that's not factoring in the angle of the shot. So yeah, semi-ballistic's not going to do. We're going to need standard. So let's test this out. I don't actually want to shoot him at the moment. I want to get get him identified and then start shooting him at plus 10 kilometers outside a torpedo range. Now obviously, in a battle scenario, the enemy torpedo ships are quite likely going to be in front of the battleship, which means that you don't just have to be outside of torpedo range of the target, but you have to be outside of torpedo range of the screening ship, so might even need further than 10 kilometers. But that's all theoretical, so let's just pretend that the target is the same distance away. The torpedo boats are the same distance away as the target. So apparently we've got 44 inches of pen. So this should be spot on, I reckon. So we're at 10 kilometers now, so let's turn the guns on. We've got 93% chance to hit. So let's just carry on going in a straight line from here. Now, obviously, if the enemy decides to turn his bow or stern towards me, these AP shells are all going to ricochet. So I would have to turn to HE and just fire damage him to oblivion. But at least we've got really good accuracy. We're just about to get to the range now. Where we can't pen him. Well then again, it all depends on where he's facing. It makes a huge difference what direction is ships pointing. So like now, I can't pen his uh, main belt at all. So I would be relying on him to turn his ship, which is obviously not something you want to rely on. But we can still pen the uh, fore and the aft. But I reckon... Going for this design and then switching between HE and AP depending on the circumstances, probably the way to go. See the HE damage is considerably high when compared to the AP damage. If the AP is over penning or partial penning, you're better off just using HE. So 
So let's switch back over to 8p. We're getting too close, so we're getting into torpedo range, so let's turn away. See, we're just constantly hitting the deck. It's just not ideal at all. So this particular era, 1920, is definitely the most awkward era in terms of trying to avoid torpedoes and trying to destroy battleships at range. So we got a couple of overpens, but didn't do a considerable amount of damage. So it's doing okay, but it's a considerably mixed bag of results. Because half the time it's hitting the deck. The majority of the time it's over-penetrating the aft and the fore. And quite often getting partial pens on the main. So it's like, it's all over the place. Let's see if we can cause flooding with HE. Not 100% sure you can. Not within Sandy area anyway. No, it doesn't appear as if you can. What we need is as high a muzzle velocity as possible. So, let's have a look. So, take that off, leave this one on. That's the 14.9. So let's have a look at the 13.9. And then have a look at the 12. Okay, so that's got 1,092, 1,081, 1,094, so the 14-incher has got the best muzzle velocity, but it's also got the heaviest weight shell. Now, the weight of the shell makes a huge difference. So... The 12 inches got a better muzzle velocity than the 13, and it's got a lighter shell. So I reckon the 12 incher is probably going to do a better job at hitting the belt. So let's have a look at the 11 incher. The 
10 and the 9. I wish you could see all these things without actually having to go into the battle. It'd be lovely to have the enemy icon tooltip in this screen. Right, what are we looking at? 1092. Ah, the 11 inches got a better muzzle velocity and a, a lighter shell. So is the 10. And so is the 9. Right. So the 9 incher might actually be the best choice. So let's go for the 9 incher. Turn this up to maximum. And then let's see, at 10 kilometers, we've got a 37.8 inch pen. Now, is that going to be enough once it factors in the range, the range, the angle? There's only one way to find out. We just need to get him identified and then get outside of 10 kilometer range. Uh, we're all ready dropping below the required amount for a deck pan. Now obviously it, it all depends on what angle his ship is pointing at. But we've managed to get an 80% side chance, belt hit chance. So I reckon we're on the right track. So I think the 10 or the 11 might do the trick. The pen chance is actually rising, so he's obviously turning his belt towards me. Okay, let's have a look at the accuracy. So we've got a 74% chance to hit at this range. That's pretty decent. 30 inch pen. So this is actually almost perfect. It just depends on where he's going to face his ship, basically. And then the biggest issue is we're going to be over penning the aft and the fore. We've got a main belt penetration there, so it's working. It is working. So I think the ideal situation would be to have a combination of nine and another caliber that's larger. So the nine inch can go for the fore and aft belts. And then the larger caliber can try and penetrate the main belt. So for the fore and aft belt, we only need 15 inches of pen. 
So let's try and figure out what we need. So let's have a look. Let's try the 12 incher. So we need a big difference. We need the 12 incher to be double what the 9 incher is. So let's stick the 12 incher on. Right, so let's have a look. At 10 kilometers, that's 37.8. 54.7. Now, it's going to be less than that because it's going to have a steeper angle. But I reckon that might, might do the trick. So let's figure out Let's figure out what the 12 incher needs and then we'll add the 9 incher in afterwards. Okay, so at 10 kilometers, we are looking at a 48 inch pen at this particular angle. So that is considerably high, but we're probably going to want to be a little bit further away and it will drop off the further we go. And also it all depends on the angle that he's facing at. So we've got a 69% chance to hit the belt, which isn't terrible, but it's not great. Right, so main belt penetration. That's what I was looking for. Now let's see how many shots actually hit the deck. Twelve blocked shots. Jesus Christ. Uh, 
See, this is why I want to try and hit the deck, because you get much less blocked shots when you hit the deck. So that's four and aft that are blocking. So it's not just the main belt. The four and the aft are blocking as well. Main belt ricochet. Yeah, it would be nice to know if these blocks are intended or accidental. So we're hitting the main deck twice there. We got blocks off them because of the 18 degree angle. Aft deck twice blocked. Was it aft deck or aft belt? Sorry. Aft deck, four deck, four deck. See, I understand all the blocks on the deck because we're skimming off the top of it. So basically, it's a ricochet, but a ricochet on the deck and it's counting as a block. Main deck, block, four deck, block. See, that's what's happening. They're not blocks to the belt. Although we are getting some blocks to the belt. There's a, a block on the tower there. But quite often the tower counts as deck or belt as well. Main deck blocked. So the majority of these blocks are from skimming off the deck. Main belt block times two though, so yeah, also the belt. Hmm... Aft deck, main belt, both blocked. Main deck, aft deck, blocked. So what are we looking at? 38 blocks. Let's have a look. So the ricochets are just the angle of the ship. I don't really care about them. It's the blocks that I care about. So it's 41 versus 33 pens. Obviously 27 of them are over pens. But... So we've got more blocks than we have pens with this gun. So let's go back and test out the 9 inch gun. See if we get more blocks than pens. Really, I want to start at 10 kilometers. Let's just start at 10 kilometers because I, I don't care about looking at the tooltip at the moment. I just want to see the block to pen ratio.
So I am getting some belt blocks, but the majority of these are deck blocks, which I'm perfectly fine with. I mean, I'm not fine with, but they make sense. I'm actually too close here. Yeah, it's, it's all the shots that are hitting the deck. That's what's skewing the results. But I can't get a low side to deck ratio on the hits while still staying outside of torpedo range. Now, we are getting an inordinate amount of deck hits, which doesn't make sense. We should only get 25% and we're getting far more than 25%. Well, there's nothing we can do about changing that. Yeah, loads and loads and loads of deck hits. Right, well... There's not much we can do other than just set up. We c we're just going to have to accept the fact we're going to get blocks and then set up. Two different caliber guns. So, small guns. I wonder if this is a small gun. No. So I reckon we may as well just go for the 14 inch. So we need approximately a bit more than double because of the trajectory of the shot. So at 10 kilometers we've got 70, 10 kilometers we've got 37. So yeah, that's as good as we're going to get. So I reckon that would be the best system. Two 14 inches, two 9.9 .9 inches.
Right, and then I reckon we probably need to reduce the AP shell so we don't get quite as many overpens. Because at the moment, the 9 incher is penning the belt. And it's not meant, the main belt is not meant for panning the main belt, the 14 inches. So. Let's have a look what we're actually at. It was 37, wasn't it? We want it at 15, not 37. 34? Well, that didn't reduce it much. Right, 19. So that's about the right amount, 19. So it's either going to be semi-ballistic or standard. So funnily enough, they're all counting as partial pens instead of blocks now, because we've reduced the uh, AP shell. Well, it's definitely better to get partial pens than it is blocks. Let's just make sure that we are actually using AP at all times. So we've only had one block. So it's obviously the AP shell that is the cause of the blocks. Now I understand it, like I said, about getting the blocks when hitting the deck at su such a shallow angle. Because it will just skim off it. But it doesn't make sense getting the uh, blocks on the belt. I mean, I suppose you are still getting a shallow angle on the belt. It's just you'd expect it to be called a ricochet, not a block. Well, I think it worked. We absolutely slaughtered him. <laughs> so, yeah. I think I think we found the combination. We've got the 14 inch that can pen the belt, the main belt, the 9 inch that can pen the fore and aft. And then obviously you'd line up a load of 2 inches, maybe 5 inches, 2 inches for the torpedo boats and 5 inches for the light cruisers. So, let's have a look. So, the 2 and the 3 inches are Mark IV. So, it's going to be either 5 or 6 inch for the light cruisers. Probably 6 inch would be better, just in case the light cruisers have got a bit of armour. 
probably make more sense. Although that's going to increase. Interesting. That's a completely different number now I've put it on the ship. Because of the semi-ballistic. But that's fine. So 4.5 inch, yeah that's fine. And then 2 inches. They've got a long range. Let's see what the range is like when you put it on the ship. Still the same. Nice. Yeah, that range is insane. Right, so we could attempt to slot a couple more of these in. Yeah, that did not affect the trajectory of the main guns. So that's nice. You could even try and put another one here. My game is slowed down considerably for some reason. I've got a port weight offset somewhere. <laughs> Probably this one. No, it's not this one. God knows which one it is. Well, it's only point 0.1, so it's not like I care. <laughs> oh, in a minute, did I? No. God knows. Right, so that is basically the design. And then we could stick a couple more. Two inches along here for some more ridiculousness. Okay. Should we test it out? Let's see what happens, eh? Right, we've got a ridiculous aft weight offset here. So... Come on. Come on. Game's glitching all over the place for some reason. So, I think, if I move this forward, I could fit another one of these in. And it looks like this is the gun that had the 
weight offset. God knows why the game's glitching all over the place. Oh, cheers. There we go. Now, I haven't actually messed about with... <clears throat> Maybe I have. Yeah, that should be fine. Put a bit of superstructure on it. Definitely don't need that much on the conning tower. Right, sorted. Let's see how the ship goes. I just thought one of the enemy ships is the dummy ship. The battleship is just a dummy ship that hasn't got any guns, so I'm going to have to restart this change the uh, the nation that I'm playing against so all of the ships are proper ships right then let's see how they get on Look at how much damage them bloody two inches do. <laughs> they just absolutely wreck the crew. We actually got an extensive fire instead of a, a surrender from crew loss. Well, that was that was ridiculous. <laughs> That was absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, it'd be a better test if I designed the enemy ships, but...
Yeah. Absolutely annihilated them. <laughs> okay, so that, that's it. I think uh, we'll call it a day for, for this episode. <laughs> I don't think there's much point in doing any of the earlier eras. I mean, I could do 1910 and just focus on belt destroying rather than deck destroying like I have done in the previous episodes. I'll have a think about it. I might do a, a 1910 belt destroyer. But yeah. That was enjoyable. I could have turned the armor up. Got another 6%. But. I don't think armor is that important. Focus on killing things. Not on surviving. That's the way forward. Right well we'll call it an end to this test. I think that's pretty, pretty much all said and done there. So I hope it was enjoyable. Cheers for watching. Take care. I shall see you soon.